With the re-election of Donald Trump, Ukraine's government is now forced to consider pursuing its own nuclear weapons program as an alternative to declining American support, according to a new analysis by Foreign Policy. This represents a reversal of Ukraine's decision to give up its Soviet-era nuclear arsenal in the 1994 Budapest Memorandum in exchange for security assurance from Russia, the US and the UK. The article written by Casey Michel, head of the Human Rights Foundation's Combating Kleptocracy program, argues that Ukraine's president, Volodymyr Zelensky, has hinted that Kyiv may seek to develop nuclear weapons if it fails to gain NATO membership. Either Ukraine will have nuclear weapons and that will be our protection, or we should have some sort of alliance, Zelensky said last month. Apart from NATO, today we do not know any effective alliances. Michel notes that this is not the first time Ukraine has considered reviving its nuclear program. In the aftermath of the Soviet collapse in 1991, Ukraine emerged as one of a few nations to claim a portion of the Soviet nuclear arsenal. However, the US and Russia led a joint effort to strip Ukraine of these weapons, which was completed in 1994 through the Budapest Memorandum. The resulting Budapest Memorandum pledged nebulous security assurances for Kiev, with the Kremlin declaring it would never push any threat or use of force against Ukraine, the article states. In return, Kiev gave up its remaining nuclear arsenal, a move that is now not only seen by many Ukrainians as a clear misstep, but that left a lingering distaste in the mouth of Ukrainian officials about America's role in the region and even trustworthiness as a partner. According to the analysis, the re-election of Trump is a significant factor in Ukraine's potential nuclear calculus. With the expectation of diminished US support under a second Trump presidency, Kyiv may see developing its own nuclear deterrent as the only way to guarantee its survival. If NATO keeps closing the door to Ukrainian membership and to the US nuclear umbrella, then a nuclearized Kyiv would be the only logic outcome remaining, the article argues. The piece also notes that Ukraine has the technical capabilities to develop nuclear weapons. Additionally, it suggests that other nations, such as Poland, have previously threatened to pursue their own nuclear weapons programs if not granted NATO membership. The article concludes by stating that the West must welcome Ukraine into NATO, or it must start getting ready for Ukraine to rejoin the same nuclear club it was once a part of all those years ago. Locals in the Cagayan province of the Philippines were recovering after Typhoon Inching battered the northern Philippines with floods and landslides before blowing away from the country on Friday. The typhoon left two airports damaged and aggravated a calamity caused by back-to-back -back storms hitting in recent weeks. There were no immediate reports of casualties from Inching, the 13th major storm to hit the disaster-prone Southeast Asian archipelago this year. The typhoon, locally called Mars, was last tracked over the South China Sea about 100 kilometers west of the northern Philippine province of Ilocos Norte with sustained winds of up to 150 kilometers per hour and gusts of up to 205 kilometers per hour, according to government forecasters. It is expected to weaken further before hitting Vietnam. The typhoon flooded villages, toppled trees and electricity poles, and damaged houses and buildings in Cagayan province, where Inching made landfall Thursday afternoon, provincial officials said. More than 40,000 villagers were evacuated to safer ground in the province. The new damage will complicate recovery efforts from two powerful storms that lashed the northern region in recent weeks. Tropical Storm Trami and Typhoon Kongray left at least 151 people dead in the Philippines and affected nearly 9 million others, mostly in the northern and central provinces. More than 14 billion pesos in rice, corn and other crops and infrastructure were damaged. In the hardest-hit province of Batangas, south of Manila, at least 61 people died in floods and landslides. More than 630,000 people were still displaced due to Trami and Kongray as of Thursday, officials said, including 172,000 who remained in emergency shelters as Inching blew across the country's mountainous north. 
President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. decided not to attend the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit in Peru next week to focus on recovery efforts, Communications Secretary Cesar Chavez said.